Hello everyone, this is the Poe 101 series. We are levelling a gladiator through Act 7. Now unlike in previous episodes where I've shown the gems, I'm going to go over the gems again this time, but I'm going to sort of intermingle it in with the rest of the video rather than all at the beginning. So we'll get to that in just a moment. The first area of Act 7, once we kill this thing, there's basically a castle somewhere in these grounds and you'll get an amulet from it. Is this it? Probably. It's always in one of the... There we go. We get a silver locket, we'll be using that to give to the guy in town, and he will be giving us an amulet. Okay, and then once you got that, it's just basically follow the path. Once we get to it. And once we get to the end of the path, there will be a door into the crossroads. This area is based on Act 2, and so is fairly quick. That is a delirium mirror. We're not going to run it. Or maybe I'll show you what it's like. When you go through a delirium mirror, everything in the map gets foggy. And the monsters get harder to kill depending on how far away they are from the mirror. The further away, the more damage they do. And the more life they've got. But the better the rewards. And as you kill monsters, this thing will appear, which is basically telling you how much you've got. We're going to grab the waypoint and we're going to go head downwards. Just kill some stuff to see if we can get this level up. Actually, we're miles away from getting a second chest, so let's just skip that. I'm going to click this button. This will end it prematurely, and we dropped an amulet. Wow. Okay, once we're in here, we're going to follow the way all the way to the crypt like we did in Act 2. We will, however, be killing blues because we're no longer way below the area level. We will get to this cathedral-type thing, go inside... Get right to the end. And there we go. Time for a skill point. Where do we go? Where were we going? We're going this way, weren't we? We're going to go this first, and then we're going to start filling out our mana. And then in here... We need to get to the second floor, but before we do that... I want to try and find the Trial of Ascendancy, because like in Act 2, this is where it is. Eventually, I will get your essence. Did I? I'm going to recast Golem. There we go. Okay, main links. We are Bladestorm linked to Melee Fizz. This gives us more damage with bleed and more damage with physical damage at the expense of less attack speed. Chance to bleed support gives us flat physical damage along with 25% increased chance to cause bleeding and 12% more damage with bleeding at this level. As we level up, those numbers get bigger. Brutality gives us 28% more physical damage, which gets higher and higher, but prevents us from doing chaos or elemental damage, so we can only do Fizz. This only applies to the Link skills, so Bladestorm. If we want to do any other kind of damage, we can still do it with our other skills, such as Totems or Golems. That is Expedition, we will get to that. Maybe when we do maps. I'm thinking after we do the Act, I'm going to do your first map for you as well and show you what the crack is with it all. Okay, Convoking Wand. I'm not doing minions, so we don't want one of those. The traps are starting to hurt. We actually have a bit of a counter on the Pantheon Tree for traps, and we will be switching into that as soon as we get to it, which will be this act. Also in this act, we're going to be running the Labyrinth to get our second Ascendancy. Somewhere down here, we'll find it. Down we go. And then in here, we're just looking for like a little satellite island linked by a small path. It doesn't look like there are any at the moment, but we'll find one and you'll see what it looks like. That thing there is a rare with a that circle. If you stand in the circle, you take damage. So you want to be inside it or outside it, not on it. Lots of people die to that because they don't understand the mechanics. And also, some of those things can move really quick if they've got the wrong buff as well as that. And that's where they get really dangerous. Okay, he's gone. Okay, little satellite island. Yeah. Little satellite island. Let's just kill this. Jump over here and grab it. And then we're going to log.
Okay, now we're back to town. We're going to go over here and speak to Waylon Roth, and he will give us a flask. And we are going to go for evasion rating. And that gives us immunity to shock. And we're going to swap that out with the other mana flask, because we're not using mana. Okay, now we jump back to the crossroads and the waypoint. And we're going to head up the path. Uh, kill those blues there. For our movement skill, we have Leap Slam, linked to faster attacks, linked to life tap support. Our auras are Blood and Sand, Dread Banner, and Determination. And like in Act 2, it's just straight up the path. Once we get to the top, into the Chamber of Sins. And now we are going to try and get to the center again, just like we did before. Um, that thing, we don't want to walk over it, because that will set off a chain of events, which we don't want to get into yet. I really don't want any of the lead mechanics, except maybe the current one, because it slows you down. If you're spending more time doing this than me, then absolutely go for it. Okay, we've gone the wrong way. And just like before, we're getting to the center. And I've just gone through a mirror. I'm going to skip it straight away. Because it makes the area as much harder than it needs to be right now. Once we get to the center, a bit different this time. We are going to grab the waypoint, which is over there. I missed it completely. We're then going to grab the crafting recipe and talk to Silk. Once we've talked to Silk... Shield. Actually, that might be good for leveling later. What's killing me? In the map device, we're going to place Malgaro's map and activate. And now we've got six portals to Malgaro's realm. Before we go in there, let's put on our skill point for more damage. And you'll see that 1371 goes up to 1442. So these nodes are really helping boost damage. And really, this is the only damage we've been going for since these early ones. So everything else has been defensive. So if the build was feeling a bit rough, don't worry about it. It will be getting better as we now start leveling towards maximum damage. I just like to be able to survive through the axe, because if you die, he slows you down. Superior Morton Shell, we'll grab that. You should always grab the Superior Gems. There's a crafting recipe to get Gem Cutter's Prisms. And Gem Cutter's Prisms are a currency that allow you to increase the quality of your gems. With quality comes damage and all kinds of things. We want those. And what we're looking for in this area is we're just tugging the wall until we find these offshoots. Once we find this offshoot, we're going to head up the left-hand wall, kill the blues, of course. I am feeling a little less secure than I would normally. I don't know what's going on. We're going to go up the left-hand wall. And eventually, we should find another offshoot. Maybe I should use my evasion and armor flasks. They will help. Um, and if, there we go. Okay, we're going to drop a portal here just in case we die. Can be a bit rippy. Okay, but first boss fight. We are going to get behind him whenever he does those dots behind him. Because that means he's going to shoot in like a triangle in front of him. I explained that really badly. When we get to him again, I'll show you. And then he'll spawn two monsters when we get him down to certain levels. We just need to circle around them. And ki and he comes back to... Ow, that hurt. Right, that's dead, so he's going to come back. And what we'll see, hopefully... There you go. There's some circles behind him. And that basically draws an arrow to where he's going to fire. So get behind him when he does that. Eye on the side with the circles. Okay, this guy, he has a proximity shield. So we're going to have to get inside it if he ever gets it up before we kill him. Something just doesn't feel right. Okay, he's down. And now it's just Malagaro. Behind him again. Now, he's going to do this thing where he teleports around. So just get things on the ground so we're doing damage to him even though we can't hit him. And then he'll come back, and it's just rinse and repeat from here on in. There's nothing else being added to the fight. Once he's down, grab Black Venom, and then head out. And then use the portal. Go to Silk, and he will give us the Obsidian Key. We need this. And then, same as last time, 
follow the waypoint to the exit. Now the exit's protected by a shield, but that key opens it, kind of. Chamber of Sins, level 2. The other skills we're using are Ancestral Protector, Blood Rage, Corrupting Fever, Summon Stone Golem, Enduring Cry, and Molten Shell. None of the last ones need to be linked. I've actually gone past it. That's problematic. However, I have a quick solution to that. And of course, I was talking about the Dark Shrine. I believe in treading light. Open that. Go into the den. I am going to throw that there, and then I'm going to go back in. And we're going to find that Trial of Ascendancy. Got to be here somewhere. There we go. Um, that is not the entrance, however. So I can only guess from the shape it's going to be here. Just in time. And there we go. In we go. This is going to be more of these th uh, traps. We're just going to try and get through them as best as possible. And even though those doors are there, we don't want to use them. That pauses these spinny things. Grab the crafting recipe for mana regen and then head in here. Kill the blues and touch the panel. We need one more, which is in the prison. Which I missed in Act 6. We'll have to go back and get that later. Once we got this, we're going to log. Talk to Helena and she will give us a pair of boots. Let's just see what they get. 106 armor, 7% increased armor. Hmm... No, we'll keep that for now. We're going to sell those. That shield is actually really good for an early shield. And also this one. So I'm going to stash those. Now, I am running dangerously low on Scrolls of Wisdom. I don't need this many portal scrolls, though. So what I'm going to do is we're going to grab about 15 of them. 13 will do. And we'll sell it to Helena. And they will sell for Wisdoms. And then we're going to go straight back to that... In the den, we follow the path around. Kill the blues, of course. Come on. And they're down. And then we're just going to run. Loads of blues just dropped from this. Those things are really, really nasty, so just be careful with them. That is a rare. Extra life, lightning and shock resistance, and cycling damage reduction. Don't quite know what that means, but um, let's just keep hitting it till it dies. I am actually at a mana. So we are not mana stable against mobs early. So maybe we do want to go for that mana. Starting now, maybe. As soon as we get some points. Come on. Because, yeah, this is going to hamper our damage. When we run out of mana, we can't cast anymore. He's down. And he dropped some stuff when he died, so we'll kill that as well. Come on. What are you? Another shield. The game is telling us to switch. We're not going to do it yet. I can't actually wait to get the Ascendancy. Once we get the Ascendancy is when the game starts to feel really good. Ashen Fields. Follow the road down. And we're going to meet an old friend here. You remember the shopkeeper in Act 2 that was rather obnoxious? Well, he is here and he's turned into a bad guy. So we get to kill him, which is always nice. Okay. I shouldn't really be killing this stuff. I am really struggling for mana and life. Something is weird. I keep saying that, but what is it? Nothing looks out of order. Okay, in here... There's going to be a couple of bosses that jump from up here, and he fires an arrow. And we want to avoid those arrows that come down. He's done it again. They always travel in a straight line, so as soon as you know where they're travelling, go for it. And get out of the way. This wolf here, after he dies, another one will come down, and then Groost will come... There you go, Groost. Lord of the Forest. Now, our armour actually is seems to be getting rid of a load of that damage from the arrows. Now, he's charged up now, and he'll start firing those things at us, and they wreck. So, hide behind here. Once he's done, just go back in. Our golem went down. Maybe it's our golem died that's 
causing us to feel a bit dodgy on life. I used to die to this fight an awful lot, so if you die a couple of times, maybe not the end of the world, but this build is pretty tanky against this fight. He is down and leave. And then in here, we want to sort of head downwards first, because it's normally along the bottom edge. Well, it's a mixture, but if you don't go here, you'll have to backtrack, so always go down the bottom edge first to look for it. We're looking for a little side area. I can't remember what it's called, but... We'll soon find out. I think maybe it's actually... Um, Blood Rage is 4% damage is hurting us. And actually casting that too much may be corrupting fever. Where are you hiding? Is that it? That is it. The Dread Thicket. Skill point, I am going to start going for this mana, because this... Actually, none of this gives us mana regen. That's unfortunate. Oh well. More mana's more mana. It takes longer for us to run out. Now, long term, we will be solving the mana problem by using a jewel that has mana leech. So, like we leak... So, like we leak... <laughs> I can't speak today. Exact same problem, although it work as well. Mana leech. Just like we leech life, we will also leech mana. So as we do damage, we'll get some mana back, and that will sustain us. But we can't do that yet, because I am still in solo self-found. However, if you're not, then you can go and find one of these gems for... They're probably less than a chaos. And then you just put it in a jewel socket that's along our path. Now, I'm not going to move over to Trade League out of this league until we can get our axe, and then we'll move over. And that will also be dependent on me dropping a Chaos, because we're going to need at least a Chaos to buy the axe. At League Start, it's probably going to be a little more expensive for the first couple of days. So if you do intend to rush to maps early, then you might have to look at an alternative if you can't drop one. It may just mean sticking with a two-handed axe longer than we do here. Come on. There you go. Ooh. What is that? Let's have a look. 76 to 103. Critical strike. It's not as good as what we got. Dropping it. And then keep running. Now, I didn't really explain what I was doing in here. But in here, you see a load of quest markers. And you pick up these fireflies. Now, once you've got all of them, it will tell you to go and give them to somebody. Helena, is it? And I'll point that out once it happens. Also in here, there's a boss we need to find and kill. Actually, we already found him. We just didn't go and kill him. Actually, let's go and do that. Kind of now, because it looks like the last of the fireflies is going to be over there as well. Down they go. Cross and somewhere around. There we go. Another one. Firefly. Okay, deliver fireflies to Yina. So, we now know what we're going to do. We don't need to collect any more of those. We're just going to kill the boss. And we kill this boss because we get the decent pantheon. Which is Sable, which lowers the damage from Labyrinth Traps. I'm just going to stand behind him if we can. Now, these damage over time things will fly in like little clouds. Try and avoid those if you can. Get our Blood Rage on, so we're damaging him. And activate our friendly Golem, so we get some life regen. And remember to move every so often, just so our Enduring Cry pops up, because that will give us Endurance Charges and also Life Regen. Okay, he's dead. We're going to wait for him to come down. All through the art of editing, he's down already. Okay, we're going to go for this one, Soul of Rikesh. 25% reduced physical damage over time while moving. That really affects the Labyrinth Traps, because they're physical damage over time. So as we're running through them, we will take 25% less damage. 
Also, moving while bleeding doesn't cause us to take extra damage. This is important because bleeding when you're moving causes you to take 75% more damage from the bleed, which is a lot. Now, back to the exit here. And in here, we're going to run up this wall and basically head to the top of the arena. Okay, into the causeway. Once in the causeway, we're going to keep heading a straight line. Kill these things if you can, because those little fiery things really do pick you off from a distance. They do a mixture of physical and chaos damage. Now, our armor will protect us from the physical, but not the chaos. Now, there is a way we can get our armor to affect, be affected by physical. Okay. Once we're around about here, there will be a crafting recipe, and near that will be a waypoint. Grab the crafting recipe, grab the waypoint. I'm going to jump over here and keep heading towards the far this way. Is it far right or is it up? Who knows? And eventually, if we've gone the right way... There you go, we've gone the right way. Now, in the event it's not down here, it will be up near the entrance to the left. Into the Val City now. This is going to have a load of these guys, so we'll just end those. I'm going to go to Sand Stance, because we really don't need the damage for these. Area of effect will be much more effective. However, they're blue, so we probably need red for those. Throw that out again. Now, this area is pretty much impossible to work out where you're going. But in general, we're going to want to head around the outside until we find a large opening to the center. What just dropped? Five Link! That is so incredible. This character is lucky. Luck has to be a thing. There is no way you drop that many uniques on killing a boss and then drop a five link in what, Act 7? Now, how easy is that to actually roll? It's armor and energy shield, so not very easy to get the five red links we need. However, if we can get four reds and a green, it's really the wrong color. I'll have to see what we can do with it. But we probably don't have enough chromatics to get anywhere near what we want, so it's not that lucky, I suppose. Come on, where is this entranceway? It, it may not be here. Where is it? Can you stop shooting me, please? Thank you. And you. There are no entrances into this town, except maybe here. Nope. Right. It does look like there's a massive area in there, though, so maybe I missed something. Yeah, we did. It's this. Right, let's head inwards and see if we can spot. There we go. Now, in the event it's not in the centre here, then go to the top of the arena and it'll be in a little enclave around there. We're going to go and talk to Yina and she'll use the fireflies to burn the webs. However, we're not going to go in there yet. We're going to go back to town, talk to Eremia, and you'll get two skill books. And go and talk to Raynum Roth, and he will give you another skill book and some refund points. So now, one, two, three, three skill points we can get. And let's just check to see if that has a mana general, uh, mana leech roll. It doesn't. Am I going to gamble with the chromatics I've got? It'd be insane not to. Four and a blue. We can make that work. I just don't know what the blue is going to be yet. Now, we're going to have to craft this. So what essences have we got? This gives us maximum life to armor. So let's do that. Can't use it without 59 intelligence. How much have we got? 24. Yeah, not even a 30 node is going to fix that. So let's dump that in a stash tab for now, but I don't want to get rid of it. Now, when she offers you this, don't take it. 
because you can't get rid of it once you pick it up. And we don't want to run that quest because it doesn't give you anything useful. Okay, skill points. We are going to go mana. We are going to go increase mana reservation efficiency of skills. And we're also going to start pathing into here and around here. But first, let's finish off our little branch. Now I'm going to go and run lab. Before I can do that, I need to come into the first area of the prison and find the trial. And here it is. It's exactly the same as the first one, only more complicated. There's a lot more spiky things. Now we didn't switch our pantheon actually to the trap one. We will be doing that before we go into the lab. But grab that switch. Head back. Right Ow. I hit every spike on the way round. Blues. We do want to kill those. Kill those. Grab the crafting recipe, which is what? Double resistance ranks. Jump over here and then up. And then kill these. Grab that. The and then pull. Log. We got an extra all. skill point, so let's go and put that on. Which gives us our physical damage with axes. This will give us a massive hike, 1403 to 1512. And when we go to the Aspirant's Trial, because all our things are on, it goes up to 1709. Okay, I'm going to run the lab. I'm going to leave you at the door and bring you back when we get to the last fight, because you've seen this bit already. Okay, heading into the final Aspirant's Trial now. And I dropped an axe and a pair of red boots. However, the pair of red boots aren't that lucky. They have a 1 to 40% increase movement speed roll. I literally got the lowest roll at 1%, so they're garbage. The act is potentially amazing. I am going to use my regal orb on it. That works. We've still got a prefix modifier left. Let's try and get that red, though. I need a green on it, don't I? That works. Because there's a spare prefix, I believe we can do a physical roll on it, which will take it much higher than this axe. But that is for after we run lab. I did not get traps disabled. I'm glad we picked the Pantheon that has reduced trap damage while we're moving. And we are going to circle around him. Ugh! And hope to God that we survive. He's going to throw that. Now you should notice... He keeps teleporting us into the traps, which is not very nice of him. Oh, jeez. Please don't die, please. Uh, I hate traps. Oh, that was so close. I'm going to die. No. 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 If you die in Labyrinth, you have to start again. You get kicked out and have to start again. So we don't want to die in the lab ever. Whew. Okay, I can breathe again. That took an awful lot of flask spamming. I'm going to open the treasure chest. Actually, before you open treasure chests, I do suggest you actually go and get the Ascendancy first, just in case your game crashes or something. And we are going to go for physical damage. So 1709 goes to... 1803, and then we're going to go for Gratuitous Violence, which gives us bleeding enemies you kill, explode, dealing 10% of their maximum life as physical damage, and 20% more physical damage over time. We are now full on bleed build, and you will start to notice. Let's just open this and see what we got. Okay, nothing special there, and then let us go and see what we can get. Trigger Edict of Inferno on kill on gloves, or we can go for Mana Regenerate if you've cast a spell recently. Now that is a spell. So let's actually go for that. And then we exit. Now we've got the second Ascendancy, which means this build now feels pretty damn good. And I'll show you why in a second. Biders. We'll throw one of those out. And one of those out. You hear that little popping. Basically, as we kill one of them, they all explode, causing a training reaction, killing everything else. It truly is just the best feeling in the world. 
And I didn't want to activate that, but we got it. Now in here, what we want to do is move as far to the, basically to the opposite corner of the area, to the entrance. So the entrance is down from us, so we want to go left. And there's another up first. So literally as far away as you can get from the starting point in each of these sub areas. And I'm just going to keep popping these things. Now our golem went down again. As the golem levels, it does get more life, so it will be more survivable as the game goes on. Okay, there is the exit. Down to the bottom of the stairs, and then we're just going to rinse and repeat what we did up there, which is basically move as far away from the centre as possible by going away from it and then upwards. And then when we can, away from it again. Now, one thing to note here is if you don't have a movement skill that can leap, and dash isn't a movement skill that can leap, it teleports, and the teleport range isn't enough to get over gaps in some of those bridges, which means we will have to find alternative paths if you're using a different character that doesn't have leap slam. Now, um, something like flame dash will get over those. And again, rinse and repeat, move away from it, and then once we get far enough... Uh, okay, that's not quite far enough away. Okay, this is going to go this way instead. It's, this is one. We can jump over it, otherwise we'd have to walk back all the way back the way we came and try and find another path. And we are going to go this way because it's moving further away from the entrance. I do love that popping sound. Oh, that was so close. He's down. Can I jump across there? Yes, I can. This is another thing Leap Slam's really useful for. Not just movement speed, but also getting over obstacles and also dodging in boss fights. Something that's really underestimated in this game is defences by moving. If you can't move, you're going to get hit a lot more. If you get hit a lot more, you're going to die a lot more. It's just figures. So some of the characters that feel safest are the ones that can move while they're fighting, which isn't sort of these melee characters. However, you'll notice that we can move because once we drop this down, it'll keep ticking anyone in the circle. And I'm actually going to stitch two sand stamps. Because the popping should be enough now. If we just fire that out, yeah. Popping, pop, pop. Now let's just activate blood stamps again for these blues. And I'm just going to hit them and I'm going to walk... Actually, that's not blood. Actually, this is just sand stamps. And you can see they fell with like two spins that's a red one because the bleed is now really doing damage and i'm not even using um, corrupting fever anymore so much still against bosses and stuff but okay we're going to grab crafting recipe now away is this way i'm gonna jump i am have i found one i can't jump over with loops now i think i might have done you know just kill that so it gets out of my way, and then... Oh, no, we got there. It was just finicky. And one, two, and pop. I'm literally only firing one skill. Something... Really odd. It almost feels like we don't have... That skill. I'm going to check my skill tree in a minute. Yeah, I got it. It feel, it almost feels like I don't have call to arms because that's taking time to proc. And we got that, however. We're going to get bleeding you inflict deals damage 15% faster. Because that also scales bleed. Our bleeds won't last as long. But they'll hurt a lot more. And bleed by default lasts for... I want to say six seconds, but it might be eight. And nothing's going to live long enough to try that. But I will check and add it to the video post so you know what it is.
Okay, Arakali's web. This is the end of match boss. And she is quite nasty. We're going to stand over here. Drop our stuff. And we're just going to spin that round on her. And then these beams will come in. We want to avoid getting hit by those beams. We also want to avoid getting hit by her because she does heavy chaos damage and we have very little resist, like minus 30. Now, when you get minus resist in this game, it's actually a damage multiplier. You can actually see the bleed just spinning down on her then. Right, she's eaten s silk, which wasn't very nice of her, but let's go and hit her again. So if we actually just stop hitting her, You'll see the damage with bleed is happening. And also, you notice I moved out of the way in front of her because she fired that chaos beam at my golem, actually, not me. Is my golem dead? My golem's dead. Let's put it back up. And we're just going to spin everything off again. And she's going to fire. The moment she sort of goes back on her back legs, she's about to fire that chaos beam. And that really does hurt. And then those balls come in. They're all chaos. Ow! That was close. Yeah, don't get hit by her. Now, she's probably going to come up in this corner. It could be this one, but I think it's going to be this one. And just get our skills down again. And she's going to fire again. And again, and she will fall. Just try and avoid those chaos things. This is really good. 11% damage over time multiplier, which scales our bleed directly. 30 life. 2 mana per enemy killed, which helps with our mana problem. And plus 14 to dexterity, if only it had intelligence on it. We have, however, lost our resistance roll. And we don't have any spare suffixes to put it back on, so we might suffer with this. Let's try it. 68. I can live with that for now, because we can get that thing on the tree to fix that. In fact, let's start doing that now. We're going to come... Actually, I didn't get this either, did I? 10% damage over time multiplier if you've killed recently. We can also increase the length of time bleeds on enemies, but I want the damage over time multiplier. But before that, let's go for these resists to start trying to fix the holes I just created. So we're going to go this one for four all res and evasion and armor. And we should see that, yeah, they've jumped up. We want the next one as well for plus 12 and 24. Okay, now we have a chance here to change our Pantheon to this one. I'm going to suggest you actually keep with this one, at least for now. And then now we go to the Sarn Ramparts. Grab the waypoint, and in here we're basically just going to run all the way following the wall. So as the wall turns, we turn. Now what you probably didn't notice there is when I jump on people, I'm actually doing enough damage with bleed to pop them just by using Leap Slam. Obviously not bears, but they can go when I um, actually use Blade Storm. Blade Storm. I really have trouble with this skill name. I don't know why. I don't like those things. Right. Onto the top floor. And then in here we just basically follow the path. I'm only going to stop for blues. Well, maybe treasure chest or something. And then here... We are going to go for the Arcanist chest. Now, do I actually have anything to craft it with? I do. So we're actually going to craft this one, because crafting it will give it a chance to drop better stuff. So. Plus one to level of chest, and cast Lightning Storm. Can I get better than that? Guarded by a pack of monsters. Quantity of contained items. Quantity is nice, especially for currency, and this is a currency chest, so we're probably going to stick with that. Open it. I'm going to prepare by opening everything and then just fire off our skills. And there we go. Instilling orb, jeweler's orb, orb of chance, augmentation, and perhaps pretty good. Okay, the stairs. I'm going to go down here and straight into Act 8. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, then please do tickle the like button. It likes it a lot. And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see and what you want to see more of. And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.